It's your friendly neighborhood, Laser Lady, and congratulations on your new laser. You might be asking yourself, what am I even going to do with this thing? Well, beyond the fact that you could start a fire and breathe in toxic fumes, you also need to figure out what it's even capable of. Well, don't you worry. Not only do I have some free downloads for you down below, but by the end of this video, you're going to know where to put it, what to make, and how to make some money with your new laser. So uh, let's dive into it. Location, location, location. Let's blow through these laser setup basics before we dive into some fun ideas of what you can make with your new laser. There are a bunch of different lasers out there, but the requirements are all pretty similar. Not ventilating the fumes your laser will be creating is the number one mistake newbies make. When you are cutting or engraving anything at all, it creates smoke and fumes, so you need a plan. Find a place for your laser by a window for an exhaust hose to go through or use a filtration system. When picking the place you can vent your laser out to, consider the temperature of the location as well. Lasers such as water-cooled CO2 lasers and diode lasers alike hate freezing temperatures. If you want to put one in an uninsulated garage or shed and have occasional freezing temperatures, you could crack your CO2 tube and have performance issues with cutting and engraving. Make the space you choose work for you. You need space for the laser, space for your laptop or computer, and space for your materials. Give yourself a little wiggle room. Trust me, your space will soon need to grow. The boring but deadly safety talk. All right, here's the basics. Don't look at the laser beam, it will melt your eyeballs. And don't touch it either, it will melt your skin off. You might have gotten some cool glasses with your laser, but they might not be that good. Search up some nice certified laser light blocking brands or do what I do and just don't watch the laser beam when you're cutting stuff out. <laughs> However, never ever leave the laser unattended. Keep a fire extinguisher or at least a spray bottle of water nearby. I'm convinced everybody who has had a laser for a while has some sort of a fire story. So seriously, stay close. Nice lasers have a fire detection function, but not all of them and they're not 100% reliable anyway. There are forbidden materials that could literally create toxic gas, ruin your laser and or ruin your lungs. And here's a quick list of what not to laser. PVC and vinyl makes chlorine gas, which is toxic to humans and animals and can corrode parts of your laser. ABS plastic emits cyanide fumes when lasered. Last I checked, that's not good. Chromium tanned leather releases toxic chromium oxide fumes during laser cutting. That doesn't sound good either. Fiberglass contains both glass and resin with awful fumes and it won't really cut through anyway. Polystyrene foam will just melt into a flammable goo, so avoid that. So stick to wood, acrylic, and paper until you learn more about materials and find trustworthy places to purchase laserable materials. Software. Like I have mentioned, there are oodles of laser manufacturers out there and some have proprietary software to operate your laser with and others are open to freeware or the big one, Lightburn, love them. There will be a learning curve on mastering your software, but the time spent will be worth it. Personally, I really do love Lightburn. It's compatible with most lasers and has so much support and tutorials, even just here on YouTube. It's amazing. But I favor the proprietary Make It program that comes with the WeCreate brand lasers, for example, when I'm using a WeCreate laser. So what can you make with a laser? I could literally list a few hundred things that you can make with a laser, which I've actually done before here on my channel, but I've come up with five fun projects for a newbie. It doesn't matter what laser you have or how big it is. These are relatively small projects and I'll have a download for all of these below. Number one, 
magnet. First up, we have a classic magnet, but not just any magnet. This is the same exact design I had made for my very first laser project 11 years ago, a magnet. But not just any magnet, a chick magnet. Not because I'm a chick magnet, but I love chickens, and this is a fun play on all of that. If you know a chick magnet, however, this could be a great gift or to anyone else who has chickens. It's so versatile. <laughs> I recommend wood for this. I'll be using some MDF core wood board from Craft Closet in my 10 watt diode We Create Vista laser. Settings are going to depend on the type and power of your laser. Before you get to this step, take a little time trying out your settings. Pretty much every type of laser program will have a setting array to try out. Engraving this little chick shouldn't be too deep or scorched. If it is, your power settings are probably too high and or your speed is too slow. If you have a lower wattage of a laser, say a five watt diode, you will probably want to go around the cut line more than once to cut through the material without scorching it. We just need to put a magnet on the back of this and we've got ourselves a chick magnet. Number two, a box. Time to make your first box. No need to stick within two dimensional items. Let's go 3D. When I'm making something that fits together like this, you need to know about kerf. When we laser out something, we are pretty much vaporizing a line of material, which is then separating it. But now some of the material is taken away. This is what a kerf is. So in order to make up for this kerf and ensure that our joints fit together tightly, we need to adjust the side of these joints to be ever so slightly bigger or smaller, depending on your joint. Luckily for you, I have already done this in the downloadable design. Now, after you cut out the box, the corners fit more snugly, which also really helps for gluing. If you are wondering why there are these slots, it's because this is a coaster box. Now let's make some coasters to put in it. Number three, coasters. If you own a laser, it is legally required that you make coasters at least once. I don't make the rules, I'm just laying them down for you. <laughs> There are really cool materials out there that you can make coasters from, like slate or tiles. Let's just stick with the same woods we've been using. Might as well, we have the settings nailed down, don't we? The free file I have for these coasters are blank. If you are using a program like the ones I've been talking about, you can usually import an image and it will be able to engrave it. These can then be painted, stained, or sealed. I like to put a little felt on the underside of the coaster, which we can actually cut out with our lasers. Why not? Using the same cut lines as the coasters, I just cut that out of this felt, which happens to have a sticker side. It cuts much faster than the wood, so be sure to adjust your settings. You then just need to line them up and they're ready to protect tables from dangerous moisture. <laughs> They just fit right in that box too. You've got yourself a whole coaster set now. Number four, nested design. Layered and nested designs are what makes laser crafting absolutely addicting. I have the simple heart ornament design, so let's cut out each of these layers in a different type of wood to get the full effect. The more you cut out kinds of wood like this, the more fun smells there are. I think walnut and bamboo are some of my favorite laser smells. Acrylic isn't so great and leather is sure something else. <laughs> That's one of the many reasons why venting outside is most ideal. Once you have all the hearts cut out, we just need to glue them all together. A little spray varnish brings out the beauty of the wood. You can use the scraps with other heart ornaments or make a brand new one. Number five, get creative with living hinges. We're straying away from 2D again. Living hinges are wildly fun when seeing what your laser can do. The design I have for you is really just half an example and half a cord organizer, I guess. I'm going to use some nice cheap MDF from Craft Closet again, one of my go-to places for laser materials. I'll have links for that as well down below. It just cuts out a whole lot of lines and thanks to that kerf we had talked about earlier and the way it's all laid out, this thing is now bendy. Finding or creating designs with hinges like this can open up your laser projects exponentially. 
Making money with your new laser. So how do we make money with this thing, right? That's the question. First, get a few projects under your belt and then perfect them. Showcase them to your friends and your family and your coworkers and see what they have to say. That's how I got started. There are a zillion strategies on how to start a laser business and you've already gotten over the first two steps. You got a laser and now you know how to use it. You'll get better as time goes on. I myself have had a full-time laser cut jewelry business since 2014. I started out making and trying to sell literally everything. Then I saw that people liked my jewelry more than everything else I made, and the rest is history. Well, history that's still being written even because I still have that business. If you are thinking about starting a laser business seriously, you may be wondering if it's even worthwhile. With the right preparation, success can be easy. I have been in your shoes and the best step you can take to make a successful laser business is to start with this video next. Thank you so much for watching. Congratulations on your laser and happy crafting. <laughs>